Good morning, YTPC and New Age Pipe Smokers. Philly Piper Mike here. It is Tuesday, February 1st. Currently 19 degrees, going up to 36. Sunny chilly although it's going into the 50s I think like Thursday or Friday which is pretty wild for like two days and it's going right back down into like the low 30s so today is a beautiful day I'm smoking my Ryan McCauley What I call a brow burner or a chimney with the ridiculously large stack and the um, swirl. So it's got a swirl in it. It's a, whatever you want to call that. It's amazing. German ebonite. First time in like almost two weeks, what feels like forever. I am not smoking a shitty burly blend. So I'm actually enjoying my morning pipes. So today I'm, I'm smoking <clears throat> Sutliff 507C, Virginia slices. Which is um, one of my top Virginias, straight Virginias. It's just grade A, matured, bright Virginias. It's just pure simplicity, done right. Tastes amazing, ages amazing. And I, uh, Excuse me, Chris Maracle was talking about, I guess how he's not a big fan of Sutliff. And he did, he, uh, he had just found out this morning that Cobblestone was produced by Sutliff, or it was a Sutliff brand. Um, and I was like, you know what? I want to smoke some 507 season. I'm dying just for like a good straight Virginia. And being that, uh, Lately, my morning pipe is the only pipe I've been smoking, by choice. I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm smoking some Selma 5076. So, a lot of people sleep on this blend. You know, I think because the name isn't very enticing, um, it's a bulk, Sutliff bulk blend, which isn't very enticing. But um, this is this is a it, it's an extraordinary tobacco. Uh, you know, you can pick it up for cheap. Um, it ages really well, and it's just it's just really good. Um, I can't say that I'm like a huge Sutla fan either. Um, I don't care for like the, that like Sutliff, like Red Virginia or the Crumble Cakes or anything like that um, not really a big Sutliff guy myself but this is uh, one of my favorites anytime I want something that's you know just a straight Virginia that's got a little bit of depth to it uh, this is what I reach for it's it's definitely deeper um, then, you know, like a, an Orlick, it doesn't have any Perique in it, but it's got like a, it's not a, obviously it's a bright Virginia, but it's, I think the, just the age on it is, is what gives it, uh, it's good flavor. The, 
this and New Minster 400 are the two blends that I've been um, raving about for the last, you know, probably year. They're just two blends that I thought were underappreciated. You know, New Minster, that's like all the rave right now, all the rage right now, I mean, everybody's got the new, all the new Minster kick, but, um, and rightfully so, but don't sleep on 507C, you know, if you're, if you're like, uh, if you're a Virginia lover, I'm sure you'll like it, if you're, again, same, same thing with New Minster, like, if you're just getting into Virginia's, if you're like a, an aromatic guy or an English smoker, and you, you want to kind of get into Virginia's and you want like a good Virginia profile that's that's approachable and that really gives you the, the characteristics of, of what a Virginia blend can be and you don't have to spend a lot of money for it you can buy an ounce for a few bucks and try it you don't have to buy a whole tin of it you don't have to spend you know 10, 12, 15 bucks for a tin and then find out that maybe it's not your thing If it was me, I'd get a, a uh, an ounce of Sutliff 507C and an ounce of uh, Newminster. I really didn't want to take any any gambles. I mean, I'm the the polar opposite of that. You know, I'll buy a freaking pound of one and a pound of the other, and then hope I like it. But the way I look at it is, you can always trade and sell it if you have, you know if you don't like anything. Um, I, uh, I haven't got a chance to sit down and spend the probably hour I'm going to need to go through everybody's comments. Um, I have to do a better job of that. It's just, you know, by the time I, when I do have time to do it, I, it slips my mind. And when I do remember to do it, I don't have time. Um, ideally I'd be able to comment when, when everybody's comment pops up, but I just can't do that, you know, running the business and working during the day and having four kids, I have to be able to just kind of run down the, and respond to all the comments <clears throat> when I get like an hour to, to set aside. Um, and normally I would do that in the morning, but it's just been too cold to, I don't feel like typing on my phone when it's like 17 degrees out and I'm outside smoking a cigar in the morning so I've seen your comments I love your comments I just haven't been able to respond to your comments but I will I had my buddy Sergio like massive was like on a Facebook thread, we're like, you know, oh, don't leave the hobby. I'm not leaving the hobby. I mean, I'm all, I'm all in on cigars right now. I'm, I'm just, I'm going down that path and I'm enjoying the, the, the hell out of it. And it, uh, like I said before, what it, what it has to offer that the pipe community around here locally doesn't have is that, you know, I don't have really any other friends that enjoy pipes. You know, there aren't pipe lounges around where I can go with my friends and go enjoy cigars. And, you know, being with, with you know, for the last couple of years, aside from going to work, I mean, me and my wife have been out to dinner once in the last two years. Um, we haven't gone anywhere. We haven't done anything. So to be able to, to you know, go to a cigar lounge for a couple hours, that's only, you know, a few minutes from my house and sit indoors in the winter and smoke a cigar and enjoy, you know, the company of other people is extremely enticing. It's it's the one thing or one of the things that cigars have over pipes is the local community. I mean, don't get me wrong, the, you know, online community of pipe smokers is a million times better than the cigar community. Um, pipe smokers in general are just 
from my experience, not that I've had a lot of experience with cigar people, but they, they, I mean, we're a close knit group. We're we have a great, you know, there's great camaraderie. There's I haven't met too many um, crappy pipe smokers, but as far as the, especially being where I live in Pennsylvania, I mean, there's dozens of amazing cigar shops and dozens of amazing cigar lounges. Um, so it makes it hard to, it's like, gee, I could sit at home in my basement and smoke a pipe by myself, or I can go out with a couple buddies to a cigar lounge and enjoy a couple cigars, get out of the house, get a break from, from just kids and, and just, you know, just to break up the monotony. So it's pulling on me pretty strong for those reasons, you know. Now, I mean, I'm sure it'll, you know, it'll level out. I mean, I'm never going to stop smoking a pipe. I'm never going to, you know, not be a member of all the different pipe pipe groups. But, um, I and I get it because I, I, I mean, I didn't miss a day. I mean, I, I you know, and, and I've had a lot of stuff going on, you know. Like I said, we I had friends over. The other Saturday, I fixed my washer for a few hours. This Saturday, we got dumped on with snow. I was shoveling. So, you know, I haven't had the opportunity to, uh, since the holiday. And we, and we missed a couple of weeks, you know. So, I haven't been on a, a meeting since, I think, two weeks before, the week before Christmas. That's Saturday before Christmas. Um, so, you know, and I got used to, like, like I said, not, you know, having the, that those those hours to do other things than um, be in the meeting that I've, I've kind of gotten kind of used to using that time for other things but um, like I said rest assured you're not going to get rid of me that easy now I might be smoking a cigar the next time I'm on the, the virtual pipe club or the international pipe smoking lounge um, that probably will happen but that's not the end of the world. Come on, people, what are we doing? Anyway, um, so yeah, that's that. I've, uh, like I said, it's just the newness of everything. You know, it's, it's, it's having so many cigars to smoke that I've never smoked to figure out what I like and what I don't like is really exciting um, so that's where I'm at with that but um, yeah Brian McCauley Pipes Smoking Barrel Briars really can't be beat for the price and the quality um, it's just amazing and then um, Sutliff 507C, Great Virginia. Also cannot be beat. So I, I would highly recommend both. Maybe get yourself a smoking barrel briars pipe and break it in with some 507. But anyway, guys, I think I rambled on enough. Um, all I really got I uh oh um hoping uh Chris Merkel gets a speedy recovery you know he caught COVID from what I've from talking to him he seems like he's doing just fine minus the lack of smell and taste but um just thinking about you bro hope you're hope you're doing alright hope your family's doing okay I know he's got little ones as well. Um, yeah, so anyway, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow on the main channel, uh, Philly Piper. And um, yeah, all I know is I won't be smoking a Burley. And who knows when we're going to do this freaking Burley reveal thing because there's a bunch of people that haven't smoked too many Burley, too many of them. Mike Howell's going to Florida in like a week. Um, I'm sure the other people aren't going to smoke all those blends and then us get our unorganized asses together 
to where everybody can be on a Zoom meeting, that's hard enough, but to do it in like a crunch time constraint is, yeah. So it might be like March until that happens, but at some point I'll know and you'll know what, what the hell I was smoking the last uh, couple weeks. But luckily for me, I'm not like, oh man, like what was that blend I smoked? I gotta have it. Uh, I, I, I gotta know. So, whatever. It is what it is. If I never knew, I really wouldn't, really wouldn't bother me either. So, anyway, guys, you guys have a great day. Hope everybody's doing well. And remember, the left lane is for passing. See you guys.